Chapter 17, Mother Gets Her Own Way. Over the course of the next few weeks, Mother seemed increasingly unhappy with life at Outwith, and Bruno understood perfectly well why that might be. After all, when they'd first arrived, he had hated it, due to the fact that it was nothing like home and lacked such things as three best friends for life. But that had changed for him over time, mostly due to Schmuel, who had become more important to him than Carl or Daniel or Martin had ever been. But Mother didn't have a Schmuel of her own. There was no one for her to talk to, and the only person who she had been remotely friendly with, the young Lieutenant Cotler, had been transferred somewhere else. Although he tried not to be one of those boys who spends his time listening at keyholes and down chimneys, Bruno was passing by Father's office one afternoon while Mother and Father were inside having one of their conversations. He didn't mean to eavesdrop, but they were talking quite loudly, and he couldn't help but overhear. "'It's horrible,' Mother was saying. "'Just horrible. I can't stand it any more.' We don't have any choice, said Father. This is our assignment, and no, this is your assignment, said Mother. Your assignment, and not ours. If you stay, or you stay if you want to. And what will people think, asked Father, if I permit you and the children to return to Berlin without me? They will ask questions about my commitment to the work here. Work, shouted Mother. You call this work? Bruno didn't hear much more because the voices were getting closer to the door and there was always a chance that Mother would come storming out in search of medicinal sherry, so, she, so he ran back upstairs instead. Still, he had heard enough to know that there was a chance they might be returning to Berlin, and to his surprise, he didn't know how to feel about that. There was one part of him that remembered that he loved his own life back there, but so many things had changed by now. Carl and the other two best friends whose names he couldn't remember would probably have forgotten about him by now. Grandmother was dead, and they almost never heard from Grandfather, who Father said had gone senile. But on the other hand, he'd grown used to life at Outwith. He didn't mind air lists. He'd become much friendlier with, with Maria than he ever had been in Berlin. Gretel was still going through a phase and keeping out of his way, and she didn't seem to be quite so much of a hopeless case anymore. And his afternoon conversations with Schmuel filled him with, filled him with happiness. Bruno didn't know how to feel and decided that whatever happened, he would accept the decision without complaint. <clears throat> Nothing at all changed for a few weeks. Life went on as normal. Father spent most of his time either in his office or on the other side of the fence. Mother kept very quiet during the day and was having an awful lot more of her afternoon naps. Some of them not even in the afternoon, but before lunch. And Bruno was worried for her health because he'd never known anyone to need quite so many medicinal sherries. Gretel stayed in her room concentrating on the various maps she had pasted on the walls and consulting the newspapers for hours at a time before moving the pins around a little. Airless was particularly pleased with her for doing this. And Bruno did exactly what was asked of him and caused no chaos at all and enjoyed the fact that he had one secret friend whom no one knew about. Then one day, Father summoned Bruno and Gretel into his office and informed them of the changes that were to come. "'Sit down, children,' he said, indicating the two large leather armchairs that they were usually told not to sit in when they had occasion to visit Father's office because of their grubby mitts. Father sat down behind his desk. "'We've decided to make a few changes,' he continued, looking a little sad as he spoke. "'Tell me this. Are you happy here?' "'Yes, of course, Father,' said Gretel. "'Certainly, Father,' said Bruno. "'And you don't miss Berlin at all?' The children paused for a moment and glanced at each other, wondering which of them was going to commit to an answer. "'Well, I miss it terribly,' said Gretel eventually. "'I wouldn't mind having some friends again.' Bruno smiled, thinking about his secret. "'Friends?' said Father, nodding his head. "'Yes, I've often thought about that. It must have been lonely for you at times.' "'Very lonely,' said Gretel in a determined voice. "'And you, Bruno?' asked Father, looking at him now. "'Do you miss your friends?' "'Well, yes,' he replied, considering his answer carefully. "'But I think I'd miss people no matter where I went.' That was an indirect reference to Schmuel, but he didn't want to make it any more explicit than that. "'But would you like to go back to Berlin?' asked Father, if the chance were there. "'All of us?' asked Bruno. Father gave a deep sigh and shook his head. Mother and Gretel and you, back to your old house in Berlin. Would you like that? Bruno thought about it. Well, I wouldn't like it if you weren't there, he said, because that was the truth. So you'd prefer to stay here with me? I'd prefer all four of us to stay together, he said, reluctantly including Gretel in that, whether that was in Berlin or out with. 
Oh, Bruno, said Gretel in an exasperated voice, and he didn't know whether that was because he might be spoiling the plans for their return, or because, according to her, he continued to mispronounce the name of their home. Well, for the moment, I'm afraid that's going to be impossible, said Father. I'm afraid that the Fury will not relieve me of my command just yet. Mother, on the other hand, thinks this would be a good time for the three of you to return home and reopen the house. And when I think about it... He paused for a moment and looked out of the window to his left, the window that led off to a view of the camp on the other side of the fence. When I think about it, perhaps she is right. Perhaps this is not a place for children. There are hundreds of children here, said Bruno, really thinking about his words before saying them. Only they're on the other side of the fence. A silence followed his remark, but it wasn't like a normal silence where it just happens that no one is talking. It was like a silence that was very noisy. Father and Gretel stared at him, and he blinked in surprise. "'What do you mean there are hundreds of children over there?' asked Father. "'What do you know of what, go what, do you know of what goes on over there?' Bruno opened his mouth to speak, but worried that he would get himself into trouble if he revealed too much. "'I can see them from my bedroom window, bedroom window,' he said finally. "'They're very far away, of course, but it looks like there are hundreds, all wearing the striped pajamas.' "'The striped pajamas, yes,' said Father, nodding his head. "'And you've been watching, have you?' "'Well, I've seen them,' said Bruno. "'I'm not sure if that's the same thing.' "'Father smiled. "'Very good, Bruno,' he said. "'And you're right, it's not, the qui it's not quite the same thing.' "'He hesitated again, then nodded his head "'as if he had made a final decision. "'No, she's right,' he said, speaking out loud, "'but not looking at either Gretel or Bruno. "'She's absolutely right. "'You've been here long enough as it is. "'It's time for you to go home.' And so the decision was made. Word was sent ahead that the house should be cleaned, the windows washed, the banister varnished, and linen pressed, the beds made, and Father announced that Mother Gretel and Bruno would be returning to Berlin within the week. Bruno found that he was not looking forward to this as much as he would have expected, and he dreaded having to tell Schmuel the news.